Hey, what is going on guys? We are so happy that you're here. We're so happy that you're taking time once again out of your midweek to um, to check out our message and, and check out the, the uh, shorter, uh, more compact version of our message here. And uh, don't worry, it's compact, but it's still just as powerful and just as amazing of a message. It's actually spoken by Pastor Josh um, for the midweek service, and it's a message on being uh, closer in prayer. And it's during our series of Made for This that we're going through in September, and we're talking about just the, pers the persistence uh, of prayer and, and you know being clo closer to God while we pray. And, and so it's a super amazing message. We're super excited to have you guys hear it. Um, just like last week, I still have not heard the message, but it is a great message and I know that for sure. Um, so again, guys, thank you so much for being here and, and uh, enjoy the message. So when I moved out to Arizona, one of the first things that I found out was that communication is hard. <laughs> So my entire family still lives in the same city. A lot of my friends from college are still in the same city in college. And actually they, they still live together and they hang out all the time. And so like, it's really difficult to communicate with people, especially when you're far away, when, when, you're, when you uh, have distance that, that separate you. And you can be on either side of it. So for me, I find it really difficult to uh, call people a lot of times. It's like. Uh, as soon as I call um, family or friends, they're like, man, it's been two or three weeks since you called me last. I'm like, man, I, I just don't even see that. A lot of times when I'm texting, I'll be in the middle of a conversation and, and time will pass or something will pop up and, and I've completely left them hanging, right? And, and a lot of times we, we can identify with that and be like, yeah, me too. I, I'm super busy all the time as well. But it really does, it, it really is a bummer to be on the other side of bad communication or, or messed up uh, communication lines, right? Because you can feel devalued by that. You feel like, no, oh, I'm just in the middle of a conversation and somebody texted me and, and it just completely got dropped after a little bit. Or if you've ever played phone tag with somebody, you know, you, 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 you have time that you're like, okay, I'm gonna call this person. You call them, but it's not a good time for them, so they send you to voicemail. And then by the time they turn around to call you, it's a bad time for you, and so then you can't talk to them. And, and I feel like sometimes we put those, those expectations both as the communicator uh, on either line, and we, we put it to the same way that we, that we treat and, and, and operate in our prayer life. A lot of times we can feel that we have dropped texts or we have missed calls and, and, and God is not answering us or, or hearing us or, or talking back even to us. And it can be a, 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 just a bummer of a situation when you walk through it. But I think here's what, what is so cool as we've been talking about prayer is that when we pray in Jesus' name, when we pray in that authority of, of Jesus' name, he's faithful to hear us and answer our prayers through the Holy Spirit. Oftentimes in our communication, we can feel like God uh, is not hearing us, that, that we're taking one step, uh, two steps forward and one step back. Some of you might even take it a step further and say, man, I'm taking two steps forward and three steps back. Like it is just uh, uh, crazy. And we can feel very unheard. We can feel unseen. We can feel like we don't matter and that, that, that God actually doesn't even care about what we're going through. But we know that that's not the case. We know that prayer matters, that prayer is important, that, that who we are matters to God. And I think it would look incredibly different if we would actually believe in God and believe that he hears us, that he loves us, that he, he cares for us. I think that it would change everything that, that we walk through, that we, that we experience, all of that. It would just be uh, just so different because there's, there's something already, even before we get into the, the scripture today, there's something I want you to know. And that is this, that prayer will never move you backwards. Prayer always moves you forward. It only brings you closer to God. And you might look at me and be like, Josh, dude, I have, I've seen God move me backwards. Well, it might be backwards in the proximity of what you wanted, 
but God is moving you closer to him if you can can dedicate yourself to to authentically praying for his will to come. Remember, we we were talking about the levels uh, just last week. But I want to share with you tonight about the prayer uh, uh, and the plea of a man named Jarius and how Jesus answered the prayer that he had, but it was not in the way that he had expected. So it's a lot of scripture, so bear with me. Uh, We're going to get through it. It's in Mark chapter 5, verse 21. This is what it says. It says, when Jesus had again crossed over by the boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was at the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jarius came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. That's a completely different thing uh, than, than what synagogue leaders in that time were doing with Jesus. Let me just tell you. It says, he pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. And so Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. That does not sound fun. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and uh, and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. And at once, Jesus realized that the power had gone out from him. And he turned into the crowd and he asked, who touched my clothes? In verse 31, it says, you see the people crowding against you his disciples answered and yet you asked who touched me but Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it then the woman knowing what had happened to her came and fell at his feet trembling with fear and told him the whole truth he said to her daughter your faith has healed you go in peace and be freed from your suffering here's here's where the story kind of shifts a little bit because we go back to Jarius in verse 35 while Jesus was still speaking some of the people from the house of Jarius came to the synagogue leader and they said your daughter is dead why bother the teacher anymore overhearing what they said Jesus told him do not be afraid just believe And he did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And when they had came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw saw a commotion with the people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and he said to them, why all the commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. And after he put uh, them all out, he took the father's child, uh, the child's father, I'm sorry, the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him. And he went out where the child was. He took her up by the hand and he said to her, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk. She was about 12 years old. At this time, they were completely astonished. And he gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Because how many people know if you've been dead for a little bit, um, you're probably going to be hungry. I have no idea about that. I would just assume that like if, if you're dead, you would probably wake up and be really hungry. But there's some really cool things in this story. I know it's a ton uh, of scripture. I know it's a ton uh, that, that, that you read, but there's a lot that happens in here. And it's so cool when it comes to growing closer to God in our prayers and really trusting and believing in him no matter what the circumstances. Because as you read this story, Jarius, this, this, what seems like to be the, the main character of this story, he has this desperate plea to heal his dying daughter, dying, present tense. But it didn't come, the, the healing didn't come when he thought it was, 
because he had people from his house come to him and say, hey, your daughter has, has died, man. Don't mess around with Jesus anymore. Don't, don't talk to him. Like, he, he, he can't help. It didn't come at the time that he thought it was going to come, and it didn't come in the way that he thought he was going to come, because he thought that, that Jesus was going over to the house to, to, to rush over and, and, and go out there and just help as soon as he came to, to Jesus. But Jesus is walking uh, at, a, at a nice pace, and, and, and he, you know, the, there's a crowd that comes, and the plans kind of get interrupted. And I can only imagine the pain that, that Jari has felt in verse 35 when, when they said to, to him, your daughter's dead, don't bother the teacher anymore. Because he probably was looking at this situation with the healing of the, the woman uh, with the issue of blood. And he's like, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I came to Jesus first. Like, like I fell at his feet first. I was the one who, who, who deserved to, to get the blessing, to get the healing, to get the miracle. To, to I, Like I was the one who did that. And then you have this woman who steps in and, and steals it from him. Or at least that's probably what he would have thought, especially initially. But it was never in Jesus' plan. Jesus knew what he was going to do. And he knew that, that, that the timing was everything. Because Jesus healing, Jesus had, had healed before. Jesus was going to, to, to heal uh, this, this girl. But he knew that the timing would have allowed the, the, the miracle and the, and the glory he would have gotten to be even greater. And so he knew the timing of that. And it might not have been in Jairus' timing. But it was definitely within Jesus' timing. And I think that the, the two stories make it um, just such a cool narrative, uh, cohesively, if you will. And that is the, the fact that, that there's not a bother to Jesus. Jesus wasn't bothered by Jairus coming up to him and, and, and talking uh, to, to him about his dying daughter. There wasn't a bother that a woman had touched his cloak and received healing and, and he felt power actually leave his body. That's pretty crazy to me. That wasn't a bother to him. It wasn't even a bother that the initial uh, thing that he was going to, to, to interact with and, and engage had already gotten worse, right? The, the initial thing that he was going to go do was heal this dying, sick uh, daughter. She had gotten worse, and that still didn't even mess with his, his psyche or the way that he saw the situation. It didn't bother him. I think that we can take some, some solace. We can, we can understand uh, and, and have peace about the fact that we're not bothering Jesus. We don't bother God. And when our prayers don't get answered in the way that we think they deserve to be answered, maybe God hasn't even touched it yet. Maybe the timing isn't right. Maybe God's will is still, um, is still for, for, for patience in, in the season that you find yourself in. But how often in our situations do we feel like there's no hope because Jesus, because, because Jesus isn't working anymore, because God doesn't hear us anymore, because all of this stuff that we can get in our heads that the enemy would like to, for us to believe. We can, a lot of times, we, we feel like we don't matter. We feel like, man, there, there's no even reason to hope in Jesus anymore. But we have to know the power of a persistent prayer. We have to know the power of a persistent prayer. So as we kind of close up, I, I just would like to ask a question. And that is this, are you drawing close to Jesus? Or are you choosing, are, are you really choosing not to give up? Are you, are you choosing those persistent prayers? Do you have things in your life that you have been holding on for that you're not, you're still not ready to give up? There has to be things in your life that you, that you are not uh, letting go of. We have to have persistent prayers so that we can hold on to everything it is that Jesus has for us. And here's the cool thing about that. When we hold on to Jesus, Jesus will always, will always, will always show up. He will always be there for us. It might not be in our timing. It might not be in the circumstances and the ways that we see Jesus or, or we see or think that Jesus should work, right? It might not be that. 
but Jesus is always going to be there. The Holy Spirit is always going to be there to comfort us. God the Father is always listening to us. We don't have to strive to produce what will happen naturally when we spend time with the Holy Spirit, when we hold on to our prayers like it's the last thing that we have. We don't have to strive. There's, there's, no, there's no striving in prayer when we hold on to Jesus. I think that that is what's so cool about this story. I know it, it can be a lot uh, of text there. Maybe you wanna go back and read it a couple times over and just get some new things out of it because this story is jam packed with stuff. But like, I, I really do think that if our prayers would be more persistent, we would start to see God move in ways that maybe we've never thought he would move. Maybe there are things that he's wanting to do that we've never thought he would do. I am excited to see what God could do with persistent prayer. And I think you should be too. Guys, that was such an amazing message. That was so amazing to listen to, to prayer and, and being closer in prayer and persistent praying. Um, and, and so, you know, thank you so much for, again, for taking time out of your week, throughout the middle of your week, to, to listen to the message. And, and we really hope that even though it is a more compact version, you did still get something amazing from it. And, and uh, make sure that if you did, we used to have a bunch of other stuff coming up online. We have a bunch of other plans, huge, huge plans for, for um, kind of our online engagement with you guys. And, and we want to make sure we stay engaged with you. So make sure you're connected with us on Facebook and Instagram at LP Youth AZ. And then YouTube as well is going to be LifePoint Youth dash Prescott Valley. And get connected with us there and, and we can, you can get a lot more, get a lot more of, of God, get a lot more of, you know, Josh's amazing face and that amazing beard. And uh, yeah, um, if you guys don't mind, let me pray you out real quick before we go. Dear God, thank you so much for for just truly loving us and truly giving us the ability um, where we're at to, to gather and, and engage with you and learn about you, God, and grow, grow closer in relationship to you, God. And whether that is in person at church or that's even at home on your couch, in your bed, wherever, whatever we're doing, God, we just thank you that we've given us technology, ability, and freedom to, to be here and learn more about you, God. And, and we pray that, you know, throughout the week, everyone can can just learn to be closer with you in prayer, learn to be more persistent in their prayers. And, and uh, yeah, so once again, thank you, God, for how much you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. Have an amazing week.